Hi everybody, Russell Markham here from VectVest. If you need to, please refer to our financial services guide on our homepage there. In addition, please note, I'm not licensed to give personal advice. Please do speak to your financial professional for personal advice. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Forecasts and back tests used to discuss in this presentation are intended as a guide only and actual results may be affected by known or unknown risks and uncertainties and therefore may differ materially from the results ultimately achieved. With that said, let's jump into it today. So what I've done here, and if I hover my mouse down here on the VectorFest icon here, you can see there that uh, I've got all the different countries open. All right, so I've got all the different countries open up over here. So you might be wondering, how do I do it? Simply click on your VectorVest icon, put your username and password in, and make sure that you repeat the process for each and every one of these flags. And once you've done that, then when you hover your mouse down on the bottom here, you'll see your different countries, depending on where you've left VectorVest last. So if I move to real time there, I can see, yep, that's for America. And if I do this, I can come to Europe, for example. Yep, there's the European flag. All right, so it just makes things nice and easy. So coming back over here to Australia, I'll put on the market timing graph because I want to show you some key things here. So the graph layout here that I've put in is I've put the standard MTI layout. And then all I've done here is I've just come in here and right-clicked on a given uh, parameter, so MTI, for example, and I've just made it a stand out of it. All right, so you can change the weighting of that line to jump out for you. Uh, look what's happening here. If I put on the primary wave, so next to last close and the drop down, and if I then select primary wave, this will note here that the primary wave signals just popped up. So if I just zoom in a tan here, all right, this is looking at the week-to-week -week movement taking place in the market. So it's our most aggressive of all of our timing signals, but it is showing that the week-to-week -week movement of the market is starting to pick up. It's gone up. To get the primary wave, the market must have gone up week over week. So if you count back five days, one, two, three, four, five, the market there, let's see here, it uh, closed at $3.50, odd cents, 58, and if you look at it here, 3.511. So it's up week over week. All right, so there it is there. It's up week over week, hence we've got a primary wave. So we may very well be looking at the market bottom. Time will tell. And that's why I note there it's worth looking around the world. So if I come in over here, and here I'll go to the U.S. market. And let's zoom it in over, let's say, one month. And let's put on... Uh, the primary wave. We'll come to some of these other indicators shortly, but look over here. The primary wave has kicked in again, and we've hit a all-time low for the year so far. Is this the turning point? There's the primary wave. The market's gone up week over week, and we're seeing this in Canada as well. So again, if I put this, say, to one month and put on the primary wave, there we are. It's just taking place. And if I move over to Europe... And zoom it in over one month, put on the primary wave. It too, Europe has popped up with a primary wave. And we'll go to the UK. Let's put it in over one month and put in the primary wave. And there we go. So across the board, markets are starting to show a turn around here. This is exciting to see. So this is looking good uh, from a global perspective, but time will tell yet. Uh, coming back to Australia, I want to show you some interesting statistics. So if I just pick on the MTI, Market Timing Indicator, I'm going to go back all the way, you know, 15 odd years. And for this exercise, I'll just change the style just so it, it's a wee bit easier to see. So I'll just make it uh, that line there. And let's just make this uh, a line graph. There we are. And let's do this. I'll put in a horizontal line, so on the drop down here, horizontal line. And I'll put this around about the 0 0.6 mark, right, 0 0.60. Right click, change the style. And I'll make this stand out a bit, different color here. Push on OK, OK. Look at this statistically speaking. How often has Australia's MTI gone below 0 0.6? 
our market timing indicator. So, so recall what the MTI is. So the MTI, you can see here it is, MTI 0.61. You can also see it here, 0.61 per the color guard. So your MTI includes, so if it's calculation, the average of all the stocks that we track in the VectorVest database, so that's the average, $3.51. The relative timing for all the stocks that we track, currently at 0.85, so the overall trend is down. No surprises there on a scale of 0 to 2, so it's below one telling us that the trend is down and the buy to sell ratio that's the number of buys versus the number of sells to get a buy rating your vst and rt must be above one and the price must be diverging away from the stop line that we calculate every day remember that stop line is a 13 week moving average of the share price adjusted for the fundamentals all right so it incorporates all three of these puts it on a scale of zero to two Above one, it tells us that the underlying trend of the market is up. Below one, the underlying trend of the market is down. And statistically speaking, you know, below 0.6, it tells us that that market is uh, either has found or very close to finding a market bottom. As we can see historically over here, you can see when that MTI gets below that 0.6 level, round about there, it's looking for a market bottom. So things are stacking up well, statistically showing us that this market is looking to find a market bottom. It may very well have found that market bottom. Let's do this. Let's put on the buy to sell ratio and let's uh, take this off. I'll just uh, recalibrate it. There we are. Nice and neat. And the buy to sell uh, ratio here, when we look at it here, uh, you know, around about that 0 0.2 level. You know, statistically speaking, you know, let's bring it down to, what's a point two? There we are, point two level. And if I right click and make the style jump out just a tad more, let's uh, make this line uh, white. There we are, it'll stand out a bit more. There we go. So around about that point two level, that's where the market really sort of tends to bottom out. Now, if you want to sort of best fit it as, you know, or at least give yourself the, you know, the extreme sort of situations, I it very rarely does it sort of go much below this level here, so around about that 0.15 sort of mark down sort of here type thing. All right, around about that 0.15 to about 0.2, I think it's fair to say that statistically speaking, you've got a very good probability of this market bouncing off from that level. So we've got the buy to sell ratio stacking up, we've got the MTI stacking up. All right, let's put the MTI back on. And then we put our, on the VectorVest composite, the average of all the stocks that we track there. Let's turn these off now. And let's zoom it in over one month. So you can see here we are. We're bouncing off that bottom here. We've got our primary wave kicking in. All right, so things are, are starting to stack up. Let's just make sure I pulled that back correctly. There we are. Things are starting to stack up. Let's put on the MTI again. There we are. Look at that, just poking above 0.6. That's, uh, that, that's looking good. The buy to sell ratio. Look at that, 0.1, very, very anemic still. Um, but but the, the trend is starting to take place per what we're seeing on the VectorVest composite there. The average of all the stocks that we track. And if I put on relative timing, look at the momentum starting to take place here, right? So if I, if I zoom this in here, let's uh, remove that. Zoom, zoom it in over here. Look at that, your momentum has just started to pick up. So we'll keep our eyes peeled. It looks like we may have found the market bottom for the year so far, but nobody can tell you just yet. All right, uh, we'll need, need to wait a bit more to confirm that, but certainly uh, stacking up well here. All right, so there was Australia. It's always useful to look at America as well because for the US market, this often tends to be the leading indicator. Uh, in Australia, we tend to typically follow the US market. So looking at the US market here, there's our primary wave. Uh, you know, and again, like we did for Australia, here's our MTI. Let's just open this up a tad so you can see it uh, at 0.47. So, you know, it's uh, statistically speaking, 0.6 or below, a very good probability of that market finding or having found a market bottom. Look at the buy to sell ratio, very anemic at 0.11. And the relative timing, this is encouraging to see here. You see your relative timing starting to come up. Your buy to sell ratio is starting to come up. Your MTI is starting to come up. So it's early days yet. Let's wait to see how this plays out. But uh, you've certainly been given the early warning signal by VectVest. I want to do this over here. I want to put in a horizontal line just to show you in America. So there's your 0.6 level. Let's 
change the style, let's make it uh, jump out a tad more and uh, I'll put the green color on here, here we go and um, let's pull this back, alright so I'll pull it back, I've got 22 years worth of data that I can pull back here and let's do this, I'll turn off uh, the price there I'll probably need to change the style here because it's a little bit busy so let's just uh, do that, there we go so you can see here for the MTI so above one, it means underlying trend of the market is up, and below one, the underlying trend of the market is down. But I'm looking for the extreme situations. So over 22 years and 11 months worth, there weren't a lot of times where the MTI went below 0.6. So that's why, statistically speaking, we're saying there's a very good chance that the market has found the market bottom. If I pull it to where it is now, look at this. All right, so it's a, and we'll just make sure it's gone just below. So how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of the last 22 years at this level here. All right, at the current MTI level. All right, so now I'm going to look at the buy to sell ratio. And it's this. I'll bring it back to, let's say, one year. This is the easiest way to do it. You bring in the buy to sell ratio. And what you can do here is you can put in a horizontal line. So select on your lines here, horizontal line. And I want to put in one at about uh, 0.2. So uh, the easiest way to do this is zoom it in a bit. All right, so here we are. So uh, 0.2, here we are. So it's on 0.2. If I right click, change the style. And what I can do here is I can effectively uh, make it a little bit easier to see. All right, so I've done that. I've just uh, made the line... All right, the width here just increased it slightly, changed the color, and in this particular case here, I can uh, let's say make it red. All right, so I'll push on OK, push on OK. All right, now let's do this. Let's pull it back, all the way back. So 22 odd years. Let's take off uh, the MTI, and let's also take off the price. Here we are, take it off as well. All right, so we can see over there. And how often has it gone below that level there, that point two? So uh, if you look at it there, very, very rarely has it done that, right? Very, very rarely. Like, there's only been a handful of occasions. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then this is the fourteenth time. If I've counted it correctly uh, here now, of course on your computer at home you can do a much better job than I'm doing here on the fly where you can use a much higher resolution on your monitor for presentation purposes I, I make the resolution a bit bigger so it's easier to see when I present to you but uh, you can do it a lot more accurately and, and double check but the point I'm getting across is it has not happened very often at all so again statistically speaking right we pretty much are at a market bottom or very much close to it all right, so you then you connect all the dots up here uh, in terms of the overall picture. You can see the MTI, the buy to sell ratio, it's all stacking up in terms of looking to find a market bottom. We've got our primary wave kicking in and uh, we've got our short term price momentum coming up. So what you can do, of course, is you can go and do this across your other countries as well. So you can come and do this across Canada and, and Europe and UK and, and do the same type of analysis. All right, so uh, here we are. Market timing, very interesting time in, in the market here. We have the ingredients for a market bottom. Time will tell whether we have found that market bottom, but it's certainly uh, stacking up pretty well for finding that market bottom currently. All right, so see what you think. Have a play with the VectorVest tools. Are we at the market bottom? Statistically speaking, I'd say we're very close, if not there already. Let's see how it plays out. Now, of course, if you're conservative, you're going to wait, right? You're going to wait until you get either, you know, your confirmed signals or you get, let's say, use the GLBRT kicker or if you use the DEW, right? These are not as aggressive as the primary wave, right? So the primary wave is a very aggressive indicator looking at the week-to-week -week movement. But it's an early barometer to say, hey, you might just want to start getting yourself ready because this market has moved week over week. And if it continues to power on, then you'll start to see our more conservative timing signals starting to pop up. Hope you got a lot out of this. Until next week, bye for now.
Yeah.